It was about 8.30 that Sunday night. I was in my car, ready to pack up my equipment and head home. I was really tired and <laughs> all I wanted to do was just go home. Even though I planned to get some nice footage of Times Square while I was in the city, by now I was exhausted from dragging my heavy camera equipment and getting shots of Bryant Park. So all I really wanted to do was just go home and get some rest. Plus, I had about an hour and 40 minutes drive before I get to my house and hit the bed. On top of that, I hadn't had any real meal all day except for a few snacks and now I was hungry and feeling really weak. So even though I really wanted to get some nice shots of Times Square, it was time to go. So I called my wife and let her know, honey, I'm heading to Times Square to get some shots. <laughs> I'm heading to Times Square to get some nice shots for about an hour and after that I will head home. <laughs> to be honest, I don't know where the energy came from, but I suspect it has something to do with passion. And I had brought my anamorphic lenses, which I like to call the movie glasses, and um, I was eager to see what bright lights of Times Square would look like through them. So I made the resolve to push through the exhaustion and capture the night. I was about four Manhattan blocks away from 7th Avenue. Four long New York blocks. If you know, you know. So I tried to pack as light as I can for the trip. My first energy booster came from this talented drummer having a solo jam session on the corner of 42nd and 6th Avenue, right across from Bryant Park. The rhythm of his beat really woke something in me. I can't even explain it, but let's just say I'm African and rhythm is in the color of my blood. His talent commanded my attention, so I had to stop and capture the moment. But little did I know that this was going to be one of the most inspiring stories of the night. But I'll come back to this, so stay tuned. As I approached Times Square and 7th Avenue, the energy just increased and increased. There was no shortage of people. So many people outside to play, to sell, to buy, and some came just to see this famous city heard of around the world. I guess I too was out there like everyone else with my own reason. And perhaps some didn't even know why they were there, but every one of us had a story. Or more importantly, every one of us was a story, a walking story, a beautiful or tragic story summed up by the decisions made at the end of our lives. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is the story of Joseph. Joseph the dreamer, as we often call him. See, he had a dream of becoming a ruler one day, like a king. It was a big dream, a dream so big that only God can make it happen. But the journey to the dream was not gonna be easy. This journey was gonna be full of heartache, pain, struggles, obstacles, disappointments all sorts of emotions, the kind of hardships that would make anybody quit. From his brothers being jealous and hating him, plotting to kill him, throwing him in a pit to die, being sold into slavery, and as a slave, doing his job, walking in integrity, he's falsely accused of sexual assault by his master's wife, and he's thrown into prison, barely escaping death by the skin of his teeth. He's thrown into the dungeons to suffer for a crime he didn't even commit. But even at his lowest moment, God was right there with him. While in prison, Joseph's gift of interpreting dreams connects him with a king's cupbearer who had been thrown in prison as well. So the cupbearer had a dream and it was a strange dream. So he connected with Joseph and Joseph was able to interpret the dream for him, letting him know he's gonna be restored back to his previous glory, back to his position as a king's cupbearer. And so Joseph tells him, when this happens, don't forget me. Please put in a good word for me. I'm an innocent man suffering in prison for a crime I didn't commit. And the cupbearer promises to do so and show him favor. And the dream came true, just as Joseph said. So the cupbearer leaves, and to Joseph's disappointment, he's forgotten again. Years pass by, and 
It seems like he was going to be stuck in the prison forever. But that's until God orchestrated a blessing tailored specifically for Joseph. See, what happened was the king had a, a dream that he knew was spiritual and he desperately needed interpretation and nobody can interpret this dream. That's when the cupbearer on cue remembered Joseph and knew exactly where to find him. And the king sent for Joseph. And Joseph was able to come, interpret the dream and give wisdom on how to act upon the message from the dream. And the king knew right away that Joseph was a man of wisdom and a man of favor from God. And he elevated Joseph right away to implement these plans because the dream was supposed to be for the benefit of the people. So the king made Joseph second command and gave him a ring, just like a king himself. So Joseph became practically a ruler of the world as known then. So Joseph's dream eventually came true. Joseph could have made some bad choices, bad decisions, or even quit during the process. But today, his story is an encouragement to many people, dreamers just like me, who can relate. See, God was writing Joseph's story, a beautiful story of hope because of the choices he made. I too am a dreamer who dreams of becoming a great storyteller, an excellent filmmaker, impacting the world with his stories, his talent and his resources, creating opportunities for the least privileged in the world, especially in West Africa. And on this journey towards my dream, I faced obstacles, setbacks, disappointments, and moments of, oh, this is my big break, this is it, only to be let down and forgotten again and again. Or so it seems. But even in my lowest moments, Joseph's story has been a great source of encouragement to me, as I hope mine would be to others one day. So I choose to make choices that allows God to write my story. So as promised, back to the story of the street drama. Although I told my wife I was only gonna be gone for an hour, an hour became almost three hours. Yep. So on my way back, I see the drummer still jamming and playing and having fun on that same spot. And since I changed my lens, I decided to get some more close-up shots. Then this happened. See, he had kicked a big hole into the base of his drums. He had punctured it really bad. And it seemed to be an abrupt ending to a very musical night. And it was quite disappointing because according to him, It's rare that a drummer well, like to go through a head, that's not, you know, that's not average. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like for a new drum head, this is super weird for it to pop that quick. I mean, I know I'm kicking, but there's a hole in it. Yeah. These were new skins here put on the bass drum and it even rarely happens with worn out skins. So for this to happen was very strange, unusual and discouraging. He could have easily packed up his equipment and his drum sets and call it the night. Instead, he decided to get creative and find a way to make the bass drum work for him still. That was a skill quite familiar to a lot of independent filmmakers. Take what you have, get creative, and find a way to make it work. So ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the last act of the night. 